welcome to our review on the menstrual cycle. So first thing we need to know is what is the menstrual cycle and hopefully a lot of you are actually sitting there knowing this already. The menstrual cycle is the monthly cycle that gets the body ready for a potential pregnancy. And this cycle is going to last around 28 days, but it does vary from individual to individual slightly. The first thing we really need to think about is what the female reproductive system actually looks like. So here's a diagram that you do need to be able to recognize and label, as well as knowing what each of those parts actually does. So first thing we've got, the little bit sticking off the sides really, that look like the ends of some weird little alien. Those are the ovaries, and that's where the eggs will mature. The bit in the middle, that's the uterus, and that's where the fetus is going to develop. At the bottom of the uterus, you can see the cervix, which is the entrance to our uterus there. Beneath that is the vagina, which receives the sperm from the penis during sexual intercourse. And then the bit that connects the ovaries to the uterus there is the fallopian tube. So that's the site where the egg will be fertilized, assuming it's going to be fertilized. And then it continues traveling down the tube before implanting into the uterus. So what we actually find happening in the menstrual cycle is that each month the lining of the uterus starts to thicken and the whole purpose behind that is to be ready just in case an egg is fertilized. So it's ready to receive it and provide the environment it needs to develop. At the same time that the lining of our uterus is thickening, then an egg starts to mature in one of the ovaries. About 14 days after the egg has started to mature, then it gets released from the ovary, and the point at which the egg is released is called ovulation. So the egg then travels down the fallopian tube, where if sperm is present, it will potentially be fertilized. It's not a guarantee, but potentially. And then if that egg is fertilized, it will implant into the uterus lining, where it's then protected and receives all the nutrients and oxygen it requires from the mother to allow it to develop. If the egg isn't fertilized, as is way more common, then what we find is the uterus lining will be removed from the body. So what we find there is we have this whole sloughing of the lining, and sloughing is a word we don't get to use enough, but the lining breaks down and is then lost from the body, and that is what the period actually is, or menstruation is. So this isn't just something that happens without any form of control. Your body actually controls this by using four hormones, which are made in the pituitary gland and the ovaries. So we've got the follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH. We have estrogen, luteinizing hormone, or LH, and progesterone. So the first hormone we need to know about is FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. This is secreted by the pituitary gland and travels through the bloodstream to the ovaries where it's going to cause an egg to mature. Our second hormone is estrogen. Now estrogen is made and secreted by the ovaries and its whole purpose is to cause the lining of the uterus to thicken so it's ready to receive a fertilized egg. Our third hormone, then luteinizing hormone, or LH, is secreted by the pituitary gland. And what we find is that when the LH levels reach their peak in the middle of the cycle, that's when ovulation is triggered and the egg is released from the ovary. The fourth and final hormone we need to know about is progesterone. And the whole purpose of progesterone is to maintain the uterus lining and keep it thick. And what we find is that those levels will remain high throughout the pregnancy. So one of the common questions that they like about this is to give you this delightful graph here. I say graph, it's actually four graphs if you look. Now, what they're going to ask you to do with this is interpret information from it and they're probably going to get you to bring in the information that you know about the different hormones and what they do. So in order to do this, what you need to do is look at the axes first of all, or the labels on the lines if you've got more than one on a graph. So that means you know what you're actually talking about. And as daunting as it looks to see these first of all, 
just take a very logical approach to it. So start off with what we know. We know that the first thing that's going to be released is our follicle stimulating hormone, which is secreted by our pituitary gland. So what we can talk about first of all is, if we have a look on there, we've got our FSH is the green line at the top. So we can say at the start of the cycle, then we get a little increase in FSH there. Then as you come further along, you can talk about the fact that estrogen starts to increase and you can link that back in saying that FSH has stimulated the ovaries to produce that estrogen. You can then talk about the fact that that's going to be building the lining of the uterus, which you can see in the bottom graph there. The egg is released around day 14, which coincides with the peak on our LH graph. And then we've got the high levels of the progesterone to maintain the uterus lining throughout the entire time the uterus has its lining nice and thick there. As the progesterone levels drop off, then we get the period because what happens is the uterus lining will break down and be lost. So when they give you one of these graphs, just start at the beginning with one of them and then work your way through logically, making sure that you're looking for any little peaks that coincide on those different graphs and link them together with your own knowledge. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now state the hormones that are involved in reproduction, describe the main stages of our menstrual cycle, and also explain how those different hormones interact in order